Hi everyone, Guy from Midwinter Minis here. In this video, episode 5 of my Blackstone Fortress speed painting series, we're going to paint the four Chaos Beastmen models. The first thing you'll want to take care of, as always, is masking the little divots and slotter strips in the bases with paper. I'm just using snipped off triangles from the assembly guide, and some little bits of sand and aquarium gravel, all secured with superglue. Try to be a bit random when you're doing this, as they're essentially monopose figures, it's important that we add some sort of unique look to each model, and the bases are an easy way to do this. Once you're happy with how your bases look, prime your models using our grey plastic primer. Grey is a great colour to paint over for most mid-tone colours, and just a quick note about the colours we'll be using in this video. In episode 1, I detailed the 14 colour paint selection that we'll be using for our models in this series, check the link that just popped up. You can also find the paints I use, as well as alternatives from different brands in the video description. Ok, so now that's out of the way, we'll use our brown paint to cover the areas of fur and skin around the bodies of the Beastmen. Be messy and quick with this stage, as we can fix any mistakes later on. I personally wouldn't bother with doing any additional thin coats of this, one will be enough considering what we'll be doing in the next few steps. Next up we'll use our red paint to colour the clothing and fabric. Avoid the brown areas as much as you can, and there are two trick spots that you should make sure not to miss. The first is the little bits of visible clothing around the armpits, and also their bib thing that hangs down under their beards. And while that's drying, pull out your pale flesh tone, and thin it a little with water, and paint the wraps, straps and horns. Now we're going to try to keep the grenades in utility belt grey at the moment, so if you've got red or brown paint on them, use your grey paint to touch them up before we move on to the next step. At this point it probably makes sense to paint the bases black too, secure the models onto something you can hold using blue tack or something similar, and paint the bases, rims and rocky detail you added to the bases. Thinning down your paint will help you get into all the cracks of the debris. Now let's create an off-white colour that we'll use to dry brush all over the models and accentuate some of the detail. Mix our pale flesh tone with white in a 1 to 1 ratio, and then use a dedicated dry brush to dab this paint into an absorbent surface and work it well into the bristles. Drag your brush gently across the model in sweeping motions, and this will catch the raised edges, and add some fast effective highlights and accentuate detail. Doing this all over a model with a light paint always makes it look dusty and washed out, but we'll be using washes and thin paint layers soon to fix this problem. Now that we've got that dry brush step out of the way, let's use our silver paint thinned with a little water and paint the weapons, armour plates, and spikes on the models. When the Beastmen are completely dry, it's time for the fun, messy bit. We're going to use our brown wash to cover all four models entirely. This will give them a uniform tone, and add shadows to the recesses, and make everything look a bit dirty and, well, savage. In previous videos, I've used Agrax Earthshade from Citadel as a brown wash, but in this video, as I'll be covering all of the models, I'm going to use my own DIY brown dip wash. This is the same stuff that I used in my Sandstone Necrons tutorial and Speed Freaks Terrain video. I also made a video a few weeks ago showing you how to make it for yourself. It's inexpensive to make, and by my calculations, Agrax Earthshade is about 15 times more expensive volume for volume, and one pot of this DIY dip wash will last you ages. Making your own dip wash is a great way to speed up your painting if you use it responsibly, so check that video out later. 
If you're using a regular brown wash, paint it all over the models and make sure it doesn't pull too much in any of the recesses. And similarly, if you're using a dip wash, use a dry paintbrush to soak away the excess and make sure it doesn't sit or pull anywhere too much. And once all of the models have had a good all over coat, leave them to dry. I left mine overnight and they were completely dry in the morning, ready for more paint. Or not, if you wanted. Even though they look quite drab and dirty like this, you could still call the speed paint done here, but let's carry on and add a few more steps. Pop a bit of white onto your absorbent surface and use your dry brush to work it into the bristles again. Now, being very sparing, gently sweep your brush across the horns, faces, hair, beard, wraps, and the stones on the bases. Make sure to have practically no paint on your brush. We want this effect to be very subtle. Now we'll do the same thing but with silver paint and focusing on the weapons. This will give all of the metallic parts a rusty, aged look. Now you probably won't be able to get your dry brush into areas like the armor panels on the chest or back uh, without accidentally getting silver on parts that you want to keep brown or red. So we'll use our detail brush to add little random scratches and edges on the hard to reach bits of metal. Now let's add a second coat of black to the bases, covering the areas that we hit with the white dry brush. Now this is a totally reasonable place to stop if you wanted. You could call the speed paint done here. Super easy steps, cool looking models and ready to game. And that's not what they look like in the video thumbnail though, right? Well, let me show you how we get to that stage. Before we do, a super quick reminder to like this video if you've enjoyed it so far, leave me a comment, uh, but whatever you do, please don't subscribe. I would really, really hate that. Now just as we did in our Chaos Space Marine video, we'll mix a hot orange with red and yellow in a one-to-one -one mix, thinned with a little water, and use it to add a layer of highlight to the red fabric of the models. Nice and easy, just follow the folds and don't go into the recesses. Don't forget about the bib. Now let's add a bit of black wash to the horns, but only on the top two thirds of the horns. And while we've got our black wash out, we can also do some basic panel lining with our detail brush on the metallic parts. Hit any rivets, spikes or recesses you like and make their detail pop out a little more. And once you've done that, we'll quickly spice up the horns with a little more black wash, and since the first coat will probably be dry by now. Add it to the top third of the horns, just the tip, to finish off the dark transition effect. Finally, let's break out our gold paint and use our detail brush to lightly catch the trinkets in the hair braids, mm, how sweet, and the chaos symbols around their bodies. And once that's done, so are the Beastmen. Four more speed painting models done and dusted and ready to game. Oh, you might have noticed that one of my beast men is missing a bit of his horn. I did this intentionally to try and give it a bit more of a unique look. I just snipped it off with some clippers and bored out a hollow with the tip of my hobby knife. If you've been following this series so far, you'll now have 15 completed models. Four our ghouls, four spindle drones, our retinue of chaos space marines, and now four chaos beast men. In episode 6, we'll be painting the shocking Negavolt cultists, so be sure to join me then. Catch you next time. Bye for now.